After more than 140 hours into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, mostly in combat, I have some deeper insight in what to focus on during your adventures. So here are 16 advanced tips and tricks to help you stay one step ahead of your enemies. Synergy abilities are the new powerful addition to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Each regular ATB command that has this pip icon next to it gives one bar of synergy and the ammo to perform your next synergy ability. Two very important notes with this though. First, synergy abilities are not invincible, meaning your character can get hit mid-animation and die. So use this only when you know you are safe from a counterattack. In general, this means that synergy abilities that hit faster and don't have a slow startup are inherently better options, since the enemy is usually stunned when the first hit connects. Second, synergy abilities and some synergy skills warp the other character to the character you initiated on. Meaning if the other character is in danger of being attacked, you can snap them to you and dodge that attack altogether. A cheeky way to slip out of your enemy's grasp. On a similar topic, synergy abilities and limit breaks are both great abilities, obviously used for offense and utility purposes. Most easier fights, I recommend you let them rip. But for tougher fights, I actually suggest you hold on to these for defensive purposes, limit breaks especially. Limit breaks make you completely invincible during the animation. So if you're on the back foot at any point during the fight, you can use your limit break and have someone else heal you mid-attack. Other use is when enemies do high damage attacks that require them to charge up. Some of them have specific weaknesses during this time, but limit breaks and synergy abilities can punch right through these and interrupt them at any time no matter the prerequisite. So if you don't like what they're doing, sometimes either one of these options can stop them in their tracks from pulling off an otherwise fatal move. Aerial combat goes like this. If the party member is a physical attacker, there's new or previous tools to get you up into the air. If they're ranged attackers, they don't really have any aerial combat. You'll know this because there are no options in the combat commands to change to aerial combat. With cloud, dodge roll and immediately hold attack. This will have him fly towards your aerial opponent. With Tifa, you'll need some teammates to perform some synergy skills instead, and create an uppercut towards your opponents. With Yuffie, just like in Integrate, you send out your shuriken first with triangle, then press triangle again to warp to your shuriken attacked target. Everyone else has ranged options that don't require getting in close. Do not sit on ATB. If you're starting to notice that some teammates of yours are constantly full, it's time to change that. Depending on how you play, it's recommended that any characters you notice having this problem should always equip supporting materia that's not just healing, such as the time materia to cast haste, or empowerment materia to boost magical and physical attack, or any innate abilities that support the team. There's always a free window to help your teammates to get extra support. Anytime you see a barrage of attacks, such as the Sweeper's Machine Gun or the Mind Flayer's Barrage, it's possible to multi-parry these attacks. By perfectly guarding the first attack, then spamming the guard button until the attack is done, you should parry all the projectiles and get you decent ATB. Assess, assess, assess your enemies. This is a boring eat your vegetables one, but do not skip this. First, it's obvious, but this allows insight on what their weaknesses are and what strategies you should employ against them. There are many specific strategies the game shoehorns you into, and it's best to follow them. Otherwise, you're likely going to multiply the workload for yourself by brute forcing your way through. Second reason is this also adds to your goal to get new enemy skills from Chadley. And some of these enemy skills are invaluable, so scan every new enemy you see. Remember that once you assess them the first time, no need to assess again. Instead, bring up their information again at any time by pressing the touchpad. Pressing L1 brings up the icons for quick reference, and R1 brings up their attacks and what properties they have. A quick one is that you can set up your party by going into the combat settings, then pressing square to move around your party members. Once you're done, pressing X, then R1 or L1 anytime in the overworld lets you swap between your team seamlessly, letting you get your pre-set up party compositions quickly. Now we got a grab bag of one character specific combat tip per party member, starting with Cloud. Cloud's Braver is an extremely powerful attack that's great to dish out after they're staggered. Thing is, you can easily pump up those rookie numbers by doing this nifty trick. Cloud both has a self-berserk ability, which makes him dish out and take 30% more damage, and Braver, as said in the description, does more damage in the air. So preferably the combo is during Punisher Stance, hold square to self-berserk, roll away from the enemy, then quickly hold square again to fly towards the enemy in the air, then go for Braver. 
you'll get a braver that hits much harder this way. Aerith has gotten a little quality of life update since the remake, thanks to the ability to warp back to your ward when placed on the ground. This can let you cast it onto a teammate, then warp over to them, a little risky. But a better use of this is to cast multiple wards in different locations across the battlefield, either two or three on opposite sides. Aerith then has the ability to automatically warp to other wards to dodge dangerous attacks. Or if there is more than one ward placed, you can choose which one to warp to by aiming the left stick towards it giving her much better kiting and evasive abilities. Red 13's whole design depends on getting hit by the enemy attacks to increase his vengeance gauge, but in some fights you can go the entire time without him being touched at all, giving him no chance to use his better abilities. So, use the synergy skill Bodyguard on whoever you use most. While this sucks as an actual way to defend the controlled character, what Bodyguard's real purpose is is to temporarily make the enemy target the Bodyguard, forcing them to hit a blocking Red 13 and giving you vengeance gauge. It's best to tap this every once in a while, then run away. Barret's overcharged shot returns from Remake, and after its usage, slowly fills again and can be manually charged as well. An old trick from Remake is to recharge between your normal attack reloads to reload your ammo and your charge. But there's also a cheeky second kind of charge. Right after using any ATB command, tap the reload once. This does a super quick charge that's much faster than your normal charge. A sneaky way of getting some energy for your next overcharge burst. We have a guide all about a way to build Yuffie in explosive fashion, but we have another little trick that most players haven't noticed while she is performing her ranged magical attacks. She now gains these small boomerangs that circle around her and do damage to opponents. Thing is, this is also a defensive tool, letting you block many small projectiles, like magic. Tifa is arguably the best holder of the new auto-unique materia if you want to think less about your stagger situations. She will automatically improve her unbridled strength through the fight prepping for when you stagger your opponent. When you finally do stagger, she automatically performs her unique attacks and increases your stagger multiplier for you, making your job easier and making you do way more damage. Great for players who love having Tifa in the party, but aren't necessarily a Tifa main. Kate Sith's friend Mog is quite the lackadaisy companion. When Mog is on his own, he will often slowly march towards his foes, wasting time he could be helping out with damage. You could do a charge attack to get you both in, but then Kate is in danger. So a good practice to have is when you see Mog way in left field, grab him with triangle, charge attack, then dodge immediately. This will send Mog rolling on his way towards the enemy, then keep Kate out of harm's way and gain a tiny bit of ATB. One thing as you go through the game is to keep an eye on materia you want to level up and your backline, which are your party members following you but not in the main three. Why? Because not only do they sort of help out in battle, but because they're even participating at all, they also gain AP for Materia. This means any spare Materia you have lying around that needs leveling, you should always throw on characters you don't use too much. This doesn't apply to specific situations where the backline isn't there, such as some encounters or VR sessions, but any other time throughout the overworld, always keep your Materia growing, because you need a lot of AP throughout your journey. When you stagger an enemy, there's one thing, possibly two if you have the resources, you should always do. One is to cast the Time Materia spell, Stop. Stop not only stops enemies in their tracks, but also can stop the stagger bar from going down, just like in the previous game. This combined with one of the new synergy abilities labeled with the Hourglass Plus icon to increase stagger time, can rapidly increase the time the enemy is vulnerable and give you a much larger window to wail on your opponent. Combined with the stagger multiplier raising abilities such as Tifa's unique attacks, they're in for a world of hurt. And there you go, 16 tips if you want to get the upper hand in your battles in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We've got more guides and showcases coming your way for Rebirth, so stick around here on GameSpot.